Let's recap this season finale episode of The Kardashians. Hey everyone, it's Hannah Fletcher. Welcome back to Shared News. Let's get into everything involving the latest episode and the season finale of The Kardashians. I don't know about you guys, but I really did enjoy this season. I didn't know what to expect because I felt like the last season was a little bit rocky. It really wasn't my favorite. I'm a diehard fan, you guys. I've been watching, I remember sitting on my bed in high school watching every single episode of The Kardashians that I could possibly ingest into my little high school brain. And so the fact that I'm still watching and still such a fan says something, but last season was just not my favorite. This season, I feel like it turned around. I felt like things got a lot better. I feel like we were kind of off to a slow start, but I feel like things really picked up and I'm really happy to have landed where we did. So let's break down the latest episode. All right, so kicking it off, we had Scott's 40th birthday. This was a really great way to start the episode. We saw Chris, we saw Kim, we saw Chloe, we saw Kylie, we saw Kendall, we saw obviously everybody but Courtney. And this was Scott's 40th birthday. It was super sentimental, it was super sweet. Scott was able to collect a little bit of a paycheck. He was able to be seen in this episode celebrating his 40th. And honestly, it was so nice seeing how much the girls just absolutely love Scott. I feel like the fact that he's still able to work with the show and still able to be on the show and he's able to co-parent with Courtney. I think that they're handling everything as best as they possibly can. Courtney has her own identity and her own life. She is so in love and obviously she's pregnant. So I think that they're handling everything really well. I'm really happy that the Kardashians are still so there for Scott. I think it's really important for Scott to have them as that family family that is just there for him no matter what. And you can tell that they just absolutely love him. And obviously the girls were giving such great words, stating that they felt like he's a brother. They consider him a brother. It was just really nice to see. So I really liked the way that this was able to be kicked off. Let's move on to Miss Kim Kardashian herself. So obviously Kim is shooting American Horror Story. We saw a lot of back and forth between what's going on in California versus what's going on in New York. But we saw her shooting the promo for American Horror Story. She looked phenomenal. She looked so good. Um, but she did mention that she was extremely nervous about the fact that she was shooting for American Horror Story. She mentioned that she's definitely having some FOMO because of the fact that her kids, you know, are back in L.A. and she's not there. And this is an ongoing project for quite some time off and on. And she mentioned she's just super busy. And you could tell that she was definitely really freaked out, kind of shocked how much she showed us that she was freaked out about American Horror Story. I'm also kind of shocked too at how much during this episode she mentioned that she's not an actress. Like, no, she's not an actress, but I feel like Kim Kardashian isn't the type of person to necessarily label herself as not something. So the fact that she was so apprehensive was kind of interesting to watch. And again, I feel like it was a very vulnerable approach, but I think that she did a good job. And I think that Kim tackled the project all in all. I really liked watching her promo shooting. I thought that that was a really neat factor to watch like the behind the scenes of everything and watching her get done up with her eyebrows getting glued down, new eyebrows, different wig, everything like that. Um, so yeah, it was really fascinating to watch. And obviously we went back and forth and let's go and jump over to Chloe and Chris. Now these two, they're a hoot. I love Chloe and Chris, they're probably my favorite Kardashians anyway. So the fact that these two just keep ending up together is just iconic to me. Um, I love the fact that Chloe and Chris went to go on tour with Blink-182 and with Courtney. And I think that this was really great that they obviously went on a tour bus. They went to go see the show in San Diego. And on the bus, we found out that Kris Jenner, obviously she knew about Courtney's pregnancy, but she didn't know how she was going to announce the pregnancy, the details, when, she didn't know anything. So she said that she turned on ABC News and one morning and she saw that Courtney was on the news announcing her pregnancy with Travis via the All the Small Things reference, aka the sign. So I just think it was really fascinating that Chris didn't know. When I saw the trailer, I thought that they were really making it look like Chris and Courtney had like a falling out and Courtney was like just not including her mom whatsoever. But that doesn't actually seem to be the case. I'm so relieved. I was hoping nothing bad actually happened between Court and Chris, especially with Court being pregnant. You know, that's the last thing that you want is some level of like family stress. So 
I'm glad to see that everything turned out fine. If you watch any of the old footage here at Shared News, you will see that I was like really heavily predicting that these two had a falling out. And that's why Chris wasn't aware of what is going on in terms of all of these pregnancy announcements. But it just seems like it seems like Courtney was kind of going with what Travis wanted to do. They just wanted to kind of keep it private. And it seems like they kind of were determining things on the fly, too. We'll get into the gender reveal here in a second. But even that was like a last minute decision. So these two obviously were on the tour bus. There was a lot going on. Chris just kind of showed that she was very like involved and and Chloe was always just kind of like trying to calm Chris down. It was just a very funny dynamic to watch. It, the content was very entertaining, I will say that. Now let's jump to the part where obviously they park the tour bus and they are settling in some type of like Airbnb situation. They're in a huge home with a ton of different rooms. And what I thought was really fascinating is the fact that Courtney was talking to her mom about like therapy and trauma and generational trauma and how you can pass generational trauma down apparently via a woman's ovarian eggs. Like there was a whole talk and you could tell that Kris Jenner was just not into it. She was just so confused. She didn't want to have that conversation. You can tell that Chris is not into talking about feelings. And I imagine being a, a businesswoman of her caliber, she's probably all about logic and numbers. She's probably not a very emotionally in touch person. Um, I feel like a lot of times, just based off of what I've witnessed firsthand in this business, it's it you you deal with a lot of people that are very logically driven and, and factually and numbers driven. For her, I feel like she's just not a very emotional person. So at one point she starts like combing Courtney's eyebrows and talking to her about her eyebrows. It's a whole thing. And then obviously we saw, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, that was just a really funny bit. I highly recommend watching that bit if you haven't already. And obviously we see that Chloe and Chris went to the Blink-182 concert and they had a blast. They got tour jackets. They were able to see Travis do his thing on stage. They did, they did really have a great time. And you could tell, especially Chloe, she was letting loose and having fun. And Chloe deserves to. She's had, she's had quite a season. She's had quite a life and she deserves to let loose and have fun in my opinion. So it was really cute watching them just let loose and have fun. And it was really cute just watching them interact with Courtney. And again, the dynamic was hilarious because Courtney's just trying to be in service of Travis. Travis is in like performance mode. And then you've got Chris just like randomly just like saying things in the background, letting Travis know that his coffee's on the table. And then Chloe's just like looking at her the whole time. It's just, it's a very funny dynamic. Again, not the most compelling content, but very, very entertaining. So obviously, again, we're bouncing back and forth between LA and New York. Now let's bounce back over to New York, where Kim was on set for American Horror Story. So she did all of her promo work. She's had the opportunity to start shooting. She's a couple days in. She's already shot with Emma Roberts. You know, she had the opportunity to meet Emma. She spoke very highly of Emma Roberts, which was so wonderful. I've been a huge fan of Emma Roberts since Unnaturally Sadie back in the day on Nickelodeon. So the fact that like Kim was so nice and respectful to Emma and the whole cast and crew, obviously of American Horror Story. And she was very apprehensive about the crew not being respectful of her. She was afraid that they were gonna think that she didn't belong, that she wasn't qualified to be there, that she wasn't qualified to even have the level of acting challenge that she did. But Kim, Kim triumphed like she always does. And I'm really happy for her. And I'm really happy that she showed again that vulnerable side of her with us as audience members because you know this is out of her wheelhouse this is out of her realm so for her to be able to open up and show us all of these behind the scenes aspects I felt that that was really necessary and you could also tell that all of the directors loved her um, David Lynch's daughter was one of the directors of an episode and she was very pleased with Kim's performance Kim seemed very apprehensive about the fact that she was working with her because she's so well respected she's worked on several Dahmer episodes, which as we know is a very iconic series in its own right on Netflix. So I really, really am glad that everything ended up working out for Kim. And I think that, you know, obviously she is working now currently on a new project. So we can see that the acting bug was definitely uh, a, a component in Kim's life and she's going to continue to keep going. So this was a huge, huge career situation for, for Kim in a very positive way. 
Moving forward, we had Courtney and Chris. Now, after San Diego took place, we saw that Courtney was with her mom, and this was the scene where she mentioned that they were having a gender reveal last minute. Within like 24 hours, they were going to have a gender reveal because Travis had a very short period of time off, and they decided that they wanted to. But before that took place, we saw Chris and we saw Courtney having a conversation, and Courtney showed us this really cute scrapbook. And I didn't realize that Courtney could be so sentimental like this, and I, I love this for her, and I love that people still have the ability to be sentimental. I feel like everything is just on a phone nowadays. You know, she saved all of the little things that her and Travis had, like their first, I think there was a movie ticket in there. There was like some type of key. There was like this huge scrapbook just full of memories that she was able to gift Travis when she got it back so she could continue to work on it. But she showed this to her mom. I feel like seeing Courtney and Chris getting sentimental like that and having that moment, you know, that's not really something that we've seen a ton of throughout these seasons. I feel like Courtney's always deemed as the black sheep. So to see her be sentimental with her mom and to see them share this moment on camera was really nice. And you could tell that Chris was really dropped in. She was really involved and she was really interested in what Courtney was showing her. So I really liked seeing that personally, again, because we really haven't seen a dynamic like this before. Courtney's definitely taking a whole different direction, I think, with all of the family members. And I'm glad to see it for her. I really, really am. All right, and then we see Chris and Chloe go over to the Century City Mall at the Good American location. Now, what was really neat to find out is the Century City Mall, which if you guys have never been there, I highly recommend it. That is one of my favorite places to go. I've been in that Good American store. I'm actually wearing the jeans right now. Such comfy jeans, highly recommend. This is not sponsored, but listen, I really, really enjoyed the fact that they were at this mall. And Chris mentioned that this was a super nostalgic moment because she used to take the girls to that mall when they were growing up and to see the actual location on its feet in full swing that was so wonderful and to see Chloe share this moment with Chris was so cute too so I'm glad that they caught this in in the season I'm glad that they were able to get it in there it was a really great moment to see Chloe's hard work paying off she looked phenomenal Chloe always does and I'm just really glad that we were able to see her and her mom see the good American store for the very first time and I highly recommend going there if you can and i highly recommend the brand personally and last but not least we finally have the gender reveal now again this was super last minute everybody had a lot of different guesses of course we had a lot of people that were surprisingly pulling team girl we had a lot of people that were surprisingly pulling team boy her mom was very convinced that she was having a girl because of how she was carrying what i love the most are the decorations you know they they said baby Barker world tour and they were not kidding with this theme. They had wristbands that were pink and blue and you picked whatever you thought the gender was going to be. You picked that color wristband. So for a last minute gender reveal, she must have had these decorations on hand or she's got some insane party planners that are able to just produce things very quickly, um, which is it's honestly probably the second one. You guys, I mean, did, they're the Kardashians, of course. But I thought that it was a really neat gender reveal. Penelope is just stealing this season, in my opinion. Penelope cracks me up. She straight up said, boys don't do anything, and that's why she wanted for the baby to be a girl. And she basically made it sound like there's way too many boys in the house already. So poor Penelope ended up getting a, it was still a baby brother, but I love Penelope. I think that she's really cute. She's really coming into her own, and we got to see that this season. I'm so happy for her, but the gender reveal was really cute. We saw all of the siblings there, and I just think that it was a really, really cute way to, to kind of wrap everything up for this season with that basically that last scene being the gender reveal. Um, I thought that that was just a really, really cute factor. So yeah, I'm, I'm, as we know, baby Rocky is here. He was in the world. He is fine. He is happy, healthy, and safe. And I'm really glad that we were able to see some of the pregnancy journey play out on screen. I'm glad that they were able to keep it mostly private, but I'm glad selfishly that there were elements of it that were able to be played out on our screen so we could see exactly what was going on as well. And obviously the episode wrapped up with how are you feeling about this year as one of the questions that was posed to everybody. And according to the girls, Kylie had a great year. Kendall mentioned that it was a little bit challenging. Chloe mentioned that nobody can break her spirit and she's proud of herself for where she's been able to get to with Tristan. Kim mentioned that she's extremely proud of how hard she's worked, but she is exhausted. 
rightfully so. And Chris mentioned that she is happy and she's very happy because she stuck to her resolution of wanting to just do the things that she wanted to do, saying yes to the things that made her feel whole. So I'm really glad that they were able to end the episode with such a lighthearted and and warm type of tone. You know, a lot of times I feel like with these seasons, especially with this family, you never know what you're going to get. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on. There's a lot of different dynamics and they're ever changing. So to see them end on a very wholesome family connected note that was really nice to see i'm really glad to see it as a viewer so yeah let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comment section in regards to this past episode in regards to the season how are you guys feeling what are you looking forward to moving forward do you hope that there are new dynamics do you think we'll see baby rocky do you think we're going to continue to see more of tristan do you think we're going to continue to see more of Scott? You know, let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comment section. If you want my two cents, I'm hoping we see every bit of Scott and no more of Tristan. I, I just want him to just focus on all of the jobs that he already has and just not be on this show anymore. I think Chloe has established where they stand. We're good. And I think that Chloe can just focus on Chloe. I'm hoping. I, I really, I'm good. I am good. <laughs> Let me know all of your thoughts again down below in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you like this video if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on any of our future uploads. As always, I'm your host, Hannah Fletcher. You guys can follow me on social media. My handle is right there on the screen. Come on over and say hello, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.